Hello, this is Patrick W. Crawford from Muak Productions, and this is a short tutorial on how to use JMC2 OBS to export your Minecraft worlds from the game itself into an OBJ format, which you can then import into programs like Blender, Cinema 4D, and 3ds Max, and so forth. So firstly, you need to go to jmc2obj.net to actually get the downloadable file. Then you need to download the latest release here. So when you download that, you should get a file such as on your desktop. And then essentially you just need to run it as an executable. It is a Java program. In this case, you need to press keep because it's uh, warning me it's a file that does things. Of course, it's a program. So I'm gonna open this. Um, note on Macs, you may have to install a new version of Java. Click on this little icon here to show how to do that in case you run into issues. But essentially, this will then open up the JMC to OBJ window. So from here, you basically, the main thing you first wanna do is to press this triple dot icon. By default, this will be blank. Um, but when I press on that, you basically wanna make sure you navigate to where in your hard drive your world saves are. So for example, in uh, OS X, it would be located under your user, library, application support, then Minecraft. Then in the Minecraft folder, there's another folder called saves. And then you basically select the folder that you want to load. So in this case, I have a world named MC Prep Test. I'm going to select that and choose save folder. I'm gonna press that, nothing happens at first. Then I just press load. Then you see my scene shows up. So a little bit about the navigation and controls of the JMC to Obj window. So if you left click and drag, you're able to define a selection. So this is like selecting the area that you would export to your OBJ format. If you right click, you're able to pan and drag around the mouse. With your scroll wheel, you're able to zoom out or in. So just like that, and you notice that the chunks will load. So if you zoom out really far, it's gonna be very slow to load. You'll also notice that in a world that it will not have any ungenerated territory. So in this world, I truly just basically spawned in and plop down a couple blocks. So anything outside this uh, blue area of the ocean just has never been loaded, so it doesn't exist. But anyway, so I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna move my cursor around. Um, two other important settings to be aware of is that um, you have these two sliders over here or this floor ceiling box here. This is basically defining your selection vertically that will be exported. It's you know important that you don't wanna leave the floor all the way at the bottom because then essentially you're exporting all of the cave and uh, cavern and just solid block information, all those vertices, which will make your render slower. It makes the file larger and you usually don't benefit from it uh, unless you're doing those sort of stylistic world renders where you have the solid size and it's from like a sort of perspective view. Uh, but essentially, usually what I do is I will drag this slider up, up a ways so it completely covers my scene and then drag it back down until it's at the height that I want it to be. So you notice as I drag it down, more and more of my island starts to appear until I get to the point where the ocean sort of appears again. If I want to be more exact, I can use the toggles here. So basically I can toggle this up to uh, level 62, I believe. If I go up one more, the ocean would disappear. Go back down one, the ocean's there. So this is gonna be the floor I use, so nothing below this level will be exported. Note that if I want to use a transparent shader for the floor itself, or I want to see into the floor, or rather the ocean, I would actually wanna make this lower so you can see some of the uh, geometry uh, below the ocean sea level. But in this case, I'm not going to, so I'm not gonna worry about that. All right, and I also usually leave the ceiling all the way at the top because typically there's nothing above your mall, but obviously, adjust those settings to the way you need them in your scene. So next, we're actually gonna go directly towards the um, export button. And so here, there's sort of two main things we need to do. We need to set up our textures and then actually set up our uh, selections for basically exporting. So first for textures, basically this little box on the left-hand side here, you want to make sure that these two boxes here are diselected. Um, this will not work with the MC prep add-on. This is specific to Blender, uh, but it's generally probably a good thing for other programs as well to have separate files for different textures. It creates a few more files for you, but it's more stable. Um, so with those disabled, basically you can, um, you can choose to pre-upscale your textures, 
Typically, I do times four or times eight just to make sure that the uh, textures themselves are crisp. Note with the MC Prep add-on, uh, you don't technically need to do this because it handles the material properly for you, but it's still not a bad idea to do it. So with that, you basically press uh, Minecraft to export the Minecraft textures, or you could use your own custom resource pack as it implies there. So when you do that, you want to create a new folder, for example, so I can call this textures, maybe. I'll press create, and then you actually need to go up one level, make sure you have it selected. You need to select the folder, so it's highlighted there, the text appears up there, and then you can press select export destination there. So once you do that, you should note that it starts to run the progress bar here. It's basically just creating all those files. And if I go into this folder, it just created the textures folder. Inside there is a text subfolder. And in here, once it sort of finishes processing everything and basically upscaling the textures, you'll notice that all the images for the world exports will appear in this folder. So give it one moment to complete that. And you notice there they are, lovely. And they, again, they've been upscaled by four times. So that's perhaps a useful thing. All right, so now our textures are done. Next thing we wanna do is actually prepare our export settings. So I believe when you first enable the add-on, like most, or not the add-on, uh, use the, the export settings. Most of these are enabled, uh, but you don't actually want that for a lot of the cases. So going just down the list, things that we don't want, um, you can keep render unknown blocks enabled if you want. Typically I turn off render world and sides because I don't need it. Typically I turn off render biomes because it doesn't really have smooth transitions. Render entities, sometimes I can keep that on, doesn't matter. It will render things like uh, keep sheep and pigs into your scene. Um, convert all ore blocks to stone. No, I usually don't want that. I want to keep my ore textures. Then we do want to create a separate object for each material. That's very important. Well, actually that's not strictly required, but it is a useful thing to have so that your grass blocks, for example, will be a separate object to your um, tree blocks, for example. So I usually keep that on, but it's actually not required. Next, uh, create a separate object for each chunk. Um, this isn't necessary, so I usually turn it off, but it doesn't hurt it to enable it. Um, then this one, I would definitely recommend turning off because that creates a separate object for each individual block that will really slow down your UI. That's not so good. Then optimize mesh, you can, but typically I don't want to just in case it messes up. I haven't really had any issues, but you know, that actually this, this can be a good way to remove like interior blocks. So you can experiment with using it or not using it. Um, similar for do not allow duplicate vertic vertices, sort of use your discretion there, but it doesn't matter one way or another. Then these last two settings here, we want to disable um, because with the MC prep add-on, using a single material for the whole export will basically make mesh swapping not work. It will make the prep materials button not work very well. And again, we also do not want to use a single texture file. All right, so with all those things set, all we have to do now is press export and it will create our, our basically our file. Um, notice if I had, I had this unpressed, uh, I did want to export before this video. So if I press export again, it basically asks me to name my file. You select the location, you press export, and then it runs it there. And so you note that once that reaches 100%, I have my two new files here. One file is the .obj, and the other is the material file. So basically on my Mac, I have this little plugin that I use to be able to quickly view uh, models to make sure it's the right selection that I want actually. Um, so that's working properly. And then this other file is the material file, as I said. So at this stage, if you're using a program other than Blender, then this is all you really need to watch because this is now directly what you're able to import into like Cinema 4D or one of the other programs and use it for your animations. If you are using Blender, then I will briefly show how you actually want to bring it in and make it usable. So next you wanna to go to, you know, once you open Blender, go to File, Import, and then go to Wavefront Object, which is the more formal name for an OBJ object. Go to the desktop, select our .obj file, and make sure that the OBJ file did not move in reference to the texture folder since it was exported. Because again, this material file does not self-contain the textures. It's pointing to this folder, which is pointing to this subfolder, which has all the texture files. So 
Just, just a note to make sure that those didn't move, otherwise you'll lose those materials. So I'm gonna select just the .obj. It will automatically bring in the material file too. And once I press import obj, give it a second to import it. If you have a large scene, this will take much longer. You'll find very quickly when you want to reset your scene versus not. And then immediately you see, boom, we have our scene in front of us. Uh, we enabled render entity, so you see there's a little sheep here. Isn't that lovely? Um, when you press import, if at first you actually don't see your scene, uh, just press um, the home button or just zoom out and pan around. It's likely that your scene was actually located somewhere over here. That would happen, for example, if in uh, JMC to OBS you press export and you didn't have center enabled. If you had none, then it would be you know no offset. It'd be kind of a weird location in your world. Usually I enable center for this reason, so it ends up just right where I want it. All right. Um, so at this point, you can kind of see it basically has worked. So if I go to just the Blender render and then add in a simple light to my scene just to prove that all the materials and textures are there. I'll just add that in here and then go into render mode. You can see that there it is. Although at first it seems a little bit odd because it seems like the uh, materials for the leaves and for the flowers have all gone missing. Well, this is what the MC prep add-on is for is because the files themselves are there. If you go to the image browser, you do see that they're all there but basically the materials aren't set up properly initially. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select everything. I'm just go into render view to prove my point. So everything is selected and I'm gonna go over to the tool panel, um, the MC prep tab. Again, press T to bring up this menu. Uh, this is assuming you have already installed the MC prep add-on. And once I have that selected, I'm gonna press prep materials. And you notice once I do, everything gets set up properly. So you notice that the grass now appears, the material for the uh, leaves is properly done. And furthermore, if I were to enable shadows on my sun lamp here, you would notice that it would even start projecting the shadows properly um, through the uh, sort of transparent materials like that. So then that's, this is really like the original purpose of the MC prep add-on was to make this process much easier. Obviously, I added more features over time. But anyways, so this is the MC prepped, uh, you know, prep materials button that you would use with importing your scenes. If you want to use cycles instead of Blender internal, very easy. Just switch to cycles. Again, select everything and press prep materials again. And you'll notice that once again, it's now been set up for cycles. Uh, a bit slower to render on my machine here, but you'll notice if I zoom in uh, just to prove the point that Again, it looks like it should. So this is how you use JMC to OBJ and then import those worlds into Blender. If you have any questions about this process, ask in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about the MC prep add-on and how to animate and use these newly imported worlds, check out some of these other videos here. Until next time, thank you so much.